Hello everyone and welcome to this um, series of playlists. So um, we will start talking about um, how to build machine learning pipelines um, in the cloud. So using um, a tool called Kubeflow. So if you have watched my other videos, I talked about how to build machine learning pipelines on your local computer. So we are moving from that um, local environment idea and then putting our pipelines in the cloud. So why are we doing this? Um, in the cloud, you can um, run your pipeline so many times. You can see, you can track your pipeline. That is which component um, runs first and which components runs next. You are also not limited to resources, right? And we will see all that. And so we will use a tool called Kubeflow. Um, the Kubeflow project is, um, is dedicated to making deployment of machine learning workflows on Kubernetes simple. And we'll look at what Kubernetes is. So Kubeflow, the, the, the goal of Kubeflow is not to create other services, right? Which are already being used by machine learning um, engineers or data scientists. Um, but then to already to, to bring um, those well-known services under one umbrella, right? So that it's easy for the machine learning engineers and the data scientists to use. So um, Kubeflow runs on something called Kubernetes. And if you don't know what, if you haven't heard of Kubernetes before, by the end of this, um, just keep watching um, we will talk about Kubernetes and what they are and yeah, at some point. So Kubeflow runs on Kubernetes and wherever you are running Kubernetes, you should be able to run Kubeflow. So what is this Kubeflow? So Kubeflow um, includes um, services that allows you to create Jupyter notebooks. It includes services that allows you to run TensorFlow jobs. It includes services that allow you to deploy a TensorFlow model. Um, it has services that allows you to run end-to-end -end machine learning pipelines. So that is the Kubeflow pipelines. It also, it's not only limited to TensorFlow. So it also has support for PyTorch, XGBoost, um, yeah, MXNet, and some other tools also. And it's also a very large community. So if you need support, you can find a lot of support from um, the Kubeflow community, right? So um, we are more interested in the notebooks and then the Kubeflow pipelines. So we already know what Jupyter notebooks are. So let's look at what um, Kubeflow pipelines are. So um, the Kubeflow pipelines is a platform for building and deploying scalable machine learning workflows based on Docker containers, right? And we'll look at what Docker containers are. So, so for Kubeflow pipelines, you have a user interface. It's you have an engine for building your machine learning workflows. Um, you have an SDK that will help you to manipulate your pipelines. And then you also have some notebooks that will help you to interact. So let's look at an example of what this Kubeflow pipeline looks like. So this is an example of the Kubeflow pipeline, right? It's, it's, an, it's running an XGBoost um, pipeline. So um, it says um, you run your machine learning workflows based on Docker containers. So you have one box over here, which is um, something like a data preparation. You have a pandas um, transform um, step over here, which is removing headers. And then you have your XGBoost training um, component. So all these little um, rectangle boxes are um, Docker containers, right? All these boxes are Docker containers. And then your, your Kubeflow pipeline would um, run on Kubernetes and then orchestrate these components and then build that linkage between which component has to run first and which one has to run next and which one depends on which one that workflow, right? So you have an easy workflow that you can run multiple times 
in the cloud you are not limited to resources because you are using cloud resources and that makes it easy to to run your machine learning pipelines so um i have said a lot of things about kubeflow and and that kubeflow runs on kubernetes right and then kubeflow runs on kubernetes and kubeflow uses docker containers right so you have your docker containers which are which is running which is which are being orchestrated by kubeflow and kubeflow is running on kubernetes so what are these kubernetes so um kubernetes is um let me see yes so um kubernetes is um it's a it's a portable open source platform that um helps you to run docker or containerized services right so let's go back in time and see why um kubernetes is so useful so um so for traditional so there, there are different types of deployments you have the traditional deployment where you have your hardware and your os and if you want to deploy an app the person that is um you are giving the app to has to install all your libraries and everything right and that takes a long time and then you have your virtualized deployment so something like using vmware or virtualbox where you install an os and all the things that are needed for the components to run and then you just ship that um, package to someone and then you have your container deployment which may, mostly uses docker so the container deployment doesn't really have an operating system so you can see that the size of your container deployment will be smaller than this and you also then need to um, run all, all the packages will be installed and then you just ship to somebody who wants to use your applications and as time goes on you begin to understand um, how this is done and why we need to do all these things so for now just keep watching the videos um, and so I have talked about Qflow, I have talked about Kubernetes, that Qflow runs on Kubernetes, and then um, Qflow um, runs your machine learning workflows using Docker containers, right? So what are these um, Docker containers? So um, let's go to the slide here. And so what is Docker? right so um docker is just a software platform that allows you to build and test and deploy machine learning applications quickly and you package your application into something called a container right so that's where the name comes from so you package your application um into something called a container and using docker right so you, you, you write your, so you build your application and then you package that using Docker into a container. So I've already talked about, um, what a con, um, what, um, you, we've seen this diagram when we're talking about Kubernetes. So what is a container? So a container is just a running instance of a Docker application, right? And um, as I said, a container has a smaller size than if you are using a, a virtual machine or a VMware or VirtualBox because there is no OS. So you just have what is needed to make your application run. So in that case, um, you are using less resources, you are using less space, and it's faster to ship your applications also, right? So you have separate different containers running different apps and those containers can talk to each other right and so um before you you are able to run a container you need to build something called a docker image right so the docker image is the blueprint of how your docker container should run right so that is the blueprint so the docker image is the blueprint of how your container should run before you can build your docker image you need to write something like called a docker file right so the docker file would contain the set of instructions on how your docker image should be built and then when you build that docker image 
you have a running a running instance of your docker image which is called the docker container right and then these docker containers are your running applications right but then um kubeflow can take this docker image right and then run it on kubernetes and this docker image can contain your machine learning um, workflow right so in in a nutshell that is how the whole um, process is linked to to each other and then you can also put your docker images online so that other people can use so you can put your docker images on um, docker hub so docker hub is a, is a public um, or private there's also a private part so it's a, it's a public repo where you can um, see um, very famous docker images that you can use for your applications and yeah so this is how the docker hub um, site looks like so you have engine x you have redis so you have an ubuntu um, docker image so if i'm to use this docker image it's very simple it's just one command i would it will pull this ubuntu image and then it will just be running it on my computer i don't need to install ubuntu i just have to pull this docker image and then i i just run it just use it so you can see how simple it is and my sql docker image i'll just pull it and run it and you will see how you you'll see how we, we will do that and then you have mongodb image so you can see the number of pools like 10 million plus so which means these images are really like very popular images and 10 million plus pools shows that a lot of people use docker right so um before you you run um before you you build an image i said you need to run uh, you need to write a docker file right so the docker file uh, specifies how you should build your image right so this is an example of a docker file so you, you you have a from command so the from command calls an image right so CentOS 7 is like an um, operating system and then it will install some library so you if you want to install something um, tell your docker image to install something when it's um, first pulled you use the run command and then this run command also creates a virtual environment and this also run commands also installs a python library so pip install something and um or some library i don't know what indica is and then the copy command copies and um, files from your local os right into your um um, your docker um, image right or your docker container and then you expose so i want to use port m8000 um, so bear in mind that your docker images or your docker containers are running on your operating system right so if you want your operating system to communicate to the with the docker image or your docker container you have to use ports so if i expose port 8000 then I can communicate with that docker container or image using um, that port and then entry point means that i should run this command when i start my docker image right so this is the basic um, overview of docker file we would write our own docker files in the future um, but then i just want to leave you with this image so this is the overview of kubeflow kubernetes and docker so you have your docker images that are running right so this is maybe one image um, which is um, maybe um, let's say file download you have another image that could probably be um, process the file that has been downloaded you have another image that is maybe um, let's say train the, the model right train the, the a model using the file another maybe another training model another training model and then something else maybe push the train model to some directory right and you have all these um, components as docker images right and then kubernetes can orchestrate um, 
the running of all these components, right? So I can write something called a YAML file that would um, specify how all these components, all these images should be run on Kubernetes. And Qflow uses Kubernetes to then build your machine learning um, cycle, right? Using these Docker components. So um, we will look at all these um, and in the next videos. So um, for now, um, let's um, end here and then we will continue in our next videos on how to build a simple Docker image. So see you in the next video.